and welcome to my channel, a platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday, so be sure to subscribe and turn on the bell to get notified when I post any videos. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at statements, specifically bank statements and account statements, and teaching you how to interpret those and answer questions on those, and also what are the main differences between the two. Okay, so let's, let's do this. lesson we're going to be looking at uh, financial statements specifically looking at statements that have to do with bank accounts and then statements that actually have to do with like debit orders or accounts that you receive from a service provider okay so um and then at the end i'm sort of just going to give you a little bit of um insight and some tips on how to really think about these types of questions so that when you are posed questions in a test or in an exam you can apply what you've learned in this uh, lesson to those questions okay so we will start by looking at the definitions with regards to bank statements so let me just clarify a bank statement is so if you've got a bank account right then essentially a bank statement just tells you what transactions are taking place in your account so what money is coming into your account what money is leaving in your account and how much you have left okay so that's essentially your bank statement so whether you bank with capitec whether you bank with standard bank whether you bank with any any sort of uh, financial institution a bank statement will then just be a document that shows you what transactions are actually taking place in your in your account right so there's a couple of definitions that for maths lit is very important that you understand and the first one is really just looking at the balance so a balance in a bank account refers to the amount of money in the account at that current time okay so whatever is happening whatever the balance is today or how, mu how much money i have in my account today is referred to as my balance in my account today okay so that's how the word balance is used. Then you have opening balance. So opening balance means it's the amount of money in the account at the start of the month or a specific period. Okay, so opening balance just means, so if let's say you start, you looking at the month of February. So from the 1st of February, what, when you opened your account, how much money did you have in there? Okay, if you had any, that would be your opening balance. And then at the end of the month would then be your closing balance. So that means that how much money do I have? What is the balance in my account at the end? And you will know that the balance, the closing balance at the end of February then becomes the opening balance at the start of March. Okay, so that's just how the word balance works. The next definition is we were looking at debit. So when an amount is debited in a bank statement, that means money is leaving the account. Okay. If it is credited, that means that money is entering. If it's a credit a value, then it means that money is entering the account. Because essentially, that's all that can happen in a bank statement, is money can either come in or money can go out. Okay, so if a transaction is debited, right? So that means I am paying for something or money is leaving my account, then I will obviously subtract that from whatever is in my balance at that stage. So you will know that when there's calculations that needs to be done, you would subtract it. And then credit would mean that you would add the value um, to your balance, which in some case can be maybe if your salary gets paid in. That means that whatever is in your account will then increase. But now I want to actually look at an actual statement so that these don't just look like a list of definitions, that you can actually see how they are applied. So we're going to look at this bank statement. So before we look at this bank statement, I want to tell you that in an exam situation, right, there are obviously a lot more trimmings to each question. And what I teach is really just the gist of what they can ask or the gist of what is actually taking place. Okay, so in an exam situation, you will see that if they give you a bank statement, 
they will always tell you who the owner of the statement is, the date that the statement is for, um, all other details surrounding this. So I want to just remind you that I'm going to teach you the calculations, but when you're actually reading the questions, please, especially for bank statements or any statement question, read absolutely everything that is given to you and take in all the information, who this belongs to, etc. Because a lot of the questions that aren't calculated, calculation related would be taken from all that other extra trimmings. But what I'm going to look at now is really so that you understand the gist of the calculations and how sort of, um, you know, bank statements are looked at so that we can actually answer any question no matter what they ask. Okay, so as you will tell, that's sort of the theme in my videos. Okay, so if we look at this, let's first just assess this. So on the left, you have the date. So this date tells you when, uh, when we looked at the opening balance. So this is the first of the fifth month and the opening balance, in other words, how much money was in the account at the start of that balance is 1,022 rand and 65 cents. Mm, sorry. Then, on the 13th of that month, this person had bank charges. So the bank charged them for whatever transactions uh, or for having an account per month. And that was 160, 106 rand and 50 cents. Now, take note, this falls under debit. Because like I showed you in the definition section, this value is actually leaving the account. So you are paying bank statement. So that means it is leaving. So when you're calculating the balance, that means you're going to take the balance and you will subtract that bank charges. So then what's left in the account is 916 and 65 cents on the 13th. Okay. Then on the 14th, there was no transactions. And on the 15th, this person again went to pick and pay and use the debit card to buy things. Right? So again, this is money leaving the account and it was debited. Excuse me. And that debit amount will then be 325.50. So again, our balance will then, we will subtract the 325 and 50. And that will give us the 590.65. So by now you can see the sort of what the balance is referring. The balance is referring to what is in that account at that current time. Right. Then, on the 25th of that month, this person received their salary. And so this is money now that is coming into the account. So this is a credit transaction. So when money comes into the account, I obviously add it to the balance. And so the total balance that this person has is their salary plus the 590 and 65 cents. Okay, so when the transaction is in the debit side, I subtract. From my balance and when the transaction is in the credit side i add it to my balance right then i have on the 26th there was a cash withdrawal so in other words the person went to the atm and withdrew this money again my balance then subtracts from i subtract 500 rand from my balance and it will give me the 18,147 and 57 cents okay then i pay rent again this is debit leaves my account only left with 10,547.57 then somebody i let's say i sell something on gumtree or i sell something on facebook marketplace and they then the person sends the money to my account i credit the account because this is money coming in and so my account and the money in my account then increases so if this is all the transactions that took place in the fifth month and that means that my closing balance, so what I have at the end, is 11,347.57 cents. Okay, so this then becomes my opening balance for June, for the sixth month. So this is sort of the gist of how a bank statement works. This only thing that can happen in a bank statement is money can either be coming in or money can be leaving. Okay. So let's just quickly look at some definitions um, or let's have a look at examples of debit transactions and credit transactions. Okay, so debit transactions, we said, is all money that leaves the bank account. So things can be like debit orders or stop order. Now, let me just explain the difference between the two quickly for you. A debit order means I give 
a service provider permission to deduct money from my salary on a monthly basis or whatever time period is agreed upon. Okay, an example of this is, is let's say I want to, I put in Wi-Fi for myself, okay? So the service provider tells me that it's 500 Rand a month and they will do a debit order. That means I give them permission to take 500 Rand out of my account every single month. So I'm telling them to reach out into my account and to take that money. Now, a stop order. A stop order is also money that I can uh, um, arrange to be paid on a monthly basis, but this arrangement is not made with a service provider. This um, arrangement is made with my bank. So if I bank with Capitec, right, then I tell Capitec at the end of every single month, I'd like to, to create a stop order and I would like you to pay this person to this account on the 25th of every month, this specific value. Okay, so take note the difference there. The debit order is I am giving the service provider permission to reach into my account and take the money. And a stop order is, is I make an arrangement from my account to say, for, with my bank to say, okay, please pay this into the um, account every single month. And in both of these scenarios, money is leaving your account. So that's why these are debit transactions. Okay, then EFT. Um, so EFT just means you are making an electronic transaction. So uh, again, this is where you go from one app where you use a banking app and you make a payment to someone else's account uh, or a service provider's account from your banking account. And money again is leaving your account. And then if you go to the ATM and you withdraw money, Okay, obviously this is again, money is leaving your account. So that means that um, this is a debit transaction and your account will then decrease. So these are probably, these are all the possible sort of debit transactions that can take place. How money can leave your bank account. Then we have credit transactions. So this is money that can come into your account. So there's various things. Somebody can send you an EFT and this is now where you are receiving the money. So they send you electronic transfer of money from their account into your account. This way money is coming in. So that will be considered a credit transaction. Then somebody can make a cash deposit. So that means they take cash and they go to their bank and they put the cash into their bank. And then the bank takes that total and then adds it to your account. Okay. Um, so other things that can increase your account will obviously be like salary, um, like, uh, but most of the time salaries would also be paid by EFT. So everything would be uh, really just other people or other institutions or your company paying money into your account um, that would then fall under EFT, um, which is uh, electronic transfer. Okay, now we're gonna look at what a statement for an account would actually look like. And really the big differences between the bank statement setup and the account statement setup. So I'm gonna quickly just pick, paint this picture for you, which is generally in a question paper done in the text and in the explanation. Um, and I'm just gonna focus on sort of the calculations required. So in this case, this person took out a Wi-Fi contract um, and they set up the Wi-Fi at the start of December. The company that they that is providing the service said they only need to make an, a payment, their first payment at the end of January. So at the end of January, they own, then they'll pay for December and for January. And each payment would then be 625 Rand. Okay? They get charged the service fee on the 25th, and the customer has a debit order on which they pay on at the end of the month. So that's the scenario. So let's look how this would look in an statement situation okay so again at the opening balance at the end of january now so remember they've had the service for the december and for january but they only need to make a payment at the end of january which is double for december 625 and for january 625 so what they owed at the start which is the opening balance was 1225 then this person makes it there's a debit order payment of 625 that means that the money then get subtracted because this person now owes 625 rand less so the balance is then 625 
And then the person remembered, oh, but I actually have to pay two payments because I didn't, because I have to still pay for December and for January. So then they make another payment and that means that they no longer owe anything. Okay, so again, I will reiterate that the balance values in the account state how much you owe. Then the monthly premium, which is the debit, um, the monthly premium, which is what they get billed, is six twenty-five. So on the twenty-fifth of the next month, now, which is February, they get charged six hundred and twenty-five. Then at the end of the month, the person pays the six twenty-five, which is a credit balance because it works in this customer's favor to owe less, and then that will give you zero. Okay, again, the end of March, then now. Again, they get charged with a 625, so that's how much they owe. The person didn't make a payment at the end of March. The end of April, they again being charged. And so now they owe 1225, which means that this person then, you'll see at the end of the fourth month, they then pay the entire 1225 and no longer owe anything. What I will say is in this kind of situations, if you skip a payment, very often the next month they will charge you sort of like a service fee or some sort of fee, uh, late fee because you paid late. Um, yeah, so this, this is just sort of a simple example, but in a real life situation, it might just be a little bit more that they end up having to pay and not just the two installments. Okay, so that is really the account statement and how this is different from the bank statement is that the credit values are subtracted here. However, in a bank statement, if something gets credited, the amount in the money increases, okay? And then the debit value is, um, in this case, is actually being added, which adds to the total of how much they are being owed. Okay, so that's really statements and how to interpret and read statements. I really hope this helped you, and I really hope that this um, explanation made it a little bit easier for you to understand. All right, so that's this video. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you feel that it's helped you and that you benefited from it in any way. Um, if you have any questions or if you have any recommendations for future videos, please add it in the comment section below. And yeah, thank you so much for joining and thank you for watching this video. Bye.